I've been here from day one, man. And hey, 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 y'all, y'all are some gentlemen, man. I'm the snipers. Hey, you know, and y'all, you guys are fair. Bro. You know what I'm saying? So I know you ain't got to explain it. Hey, what's happening? Man, what's happening with you, man? Shit, welcome to the arena. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we yeah we just chopping up, man. But you know, Mississippi campaign, man. We uh, the last show I had, I had this uh, people Israelite talking about how they want to go to the shores of Africa and mm -hmm. their own nation, and I was like, hell. And I talked about all the stuff that they have to give up. And I said, well, damn, in the Mississippi campaign, you ain't got to give it up. You ain't got to give up the internet. You ain't got to give up your car. Yeah. You ain't got to give up the deed to your house. You ain't got to <laughs> give up the grocery store. You ain't got, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing you ain't got to give up either. Your PlayStation. Your, exactly. Your entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Your BETs, Netflix, whatever. You don't have to give it up. You can... Put this black nation on training wheels, like you said. Yeah. Hey, man, please, please. Um, just like you said on your show, we just want to tag team, man. Jump in at any time. Because yes, like sir. You said, you campaign. I, uh. You ain't got to look though. Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I, uh, saw just a little taste of the earlier, um, live stream. I guess we can piggyback off, off some of that. Please, please. Okay, I'm glad you saw that. I'm glad you saw that. Just a little brief, little taste. <clears throat> okay. Um. This is this is the reality of things. I don't think that we know who we talking to. The black man and woman in America, the so-called Negro. I hear the black power talk. And that's nice. I have 40 some years in it. I was raised in it. People talk to me like I don't have any idea. I don't have any understanding or <laughs> whatever. Um, that's where I start off at. As a teenager. Of course, I was a baby you know, in the, in the early 70s. But I always was active and I understood and I I was part of that black power thing. I always wanted to be part of the Nation of Islam. And mind you, I'm going to add to you into the same mouse as Malcolm X. What's that? Oh, wait, Matt, if I got that right, did you go to the same mouse as Malcolm X in New York? Or? I saw some documentary that you did and I just, I don't know. Okay, what was the documentary? Oh, about Malcolm X? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're working on a, a documentary with Brother Omar Shabazz, and okay. it's going to be his last uh, film on Malcolm X. And he's brought a lot of different, I mean, people together because this is the finale. And he asked me to be part of, of that. And it's behind schedule. I need to call him to see where it's at because I thought that it might be released earlier this year, uh, around January, February, but, you know, things happen. Also, it's his, it's his last work on Malcolm, so he wants to really try to get everything together. Yeah, and it's, 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 yeah and it's a, I believe it's a, what's a, it's a uh, five DVD set or six DVD, something like that. It's, okay. it's a lot of DVDs involved. Absolutely. And I told him I'll, I'll do my best to try to make it you know, the best work that you ever had because um, Malcolm deserved that. So, yeah, we we working on that. I, I'm going to, I need to call him and contact him to see where uh, that stands. But we're going to get that to, uh, need to get that together and I'm going to do my best to do whatever I can to, to push that DVD. And a lot of Malcolm X uh, haters out there 
uh, Wesley Muhammad is number one. Matter of fact, Wesley Muhammad actually responded to uh, Brother Omar Shabazz's uh, videos, which is a waste of time because Omar Shabazz is, is, is on it. Is on it. I mean, he's on. He's he's yeah. He's he's bringing the receipts. He's not bringing some receipts and have to explain it. The receipts explain themselves. You don't have to do all that. Wesley Muhammad comes on his channel with all these books behind him. And he, he gives you the information. Then he got to explain it to you because you probably wouldn't understand because it's, it's really not supporting what you're talking about, sir. And some of the information, you know how, see, this is the thing about... Um, deceivers they mix truth with falsehood so yes yeah, some of it is true but they manipulate it in a manner to say to make it say something that is not really saying right, right. and the average person gets caught up because some of it is true so we get caught up in that but this last video uh, documentary by Omar Shabazz I, I have no doubt and I know he's meticulous. He's he's really working to try to make sure that it's the best that he can be. And this is this is it for him as far as the series of Malcolm. Which I don't think he could do anything that can top one of his older videos called Oh My God, Master Farah. When I saw that, if I had <clears throat> saw that when I was a young man, I never would have joined the Nation of Islam. I never would have. I never and also Sarah Sun said he did a very good job on a he did a, a video lecture about the nation of Islam uh, yeah, back in 2010 yeah. I think it was he did an excellent job and also young Pharaoh did a good job of researching too but Sarah yeah. Sun said and young Pharaoh never was part of the nation of Islam right 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 <laughs> they really they don't know they know the history and you can go out there and research some of the history but myself and Brother Omar, we was part of it. So a lot of that stuff, especially when it comes to my era, you can't tell me about what's going down in my era. I was part of it. It was live and living color. I lived it. That's right. Also, I've been around Minister Farrakhan. I know Minister Farrakhan. Minister Farrakhan knows my family. He knows who I am. Those people know who I am. When Minister Farrakhan, in the early 80s, in the late 70s, when he was raising up trying to build his little organization, it wasn't that many of us. So when he went to the different cities and whatever, you know, it wasn't that many uh, many of us. So he, he he had to know us. My my uncle was a captain in New York. Okay. Putting it and my people put in work and they old as hell right now in their seventies or whatever. My uncle, uh, he's passed, but my I still have aunties and other relatives that's there, and they still trying to put in the work. And you know they tell me certain things, but they know I'm not. I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in that like that no more. But they're gonna die, you know, believing in, in Louis Farrakhan. I, I I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do it because when you put in work, you should get some type of substance. I want a paycheck. I'm not going to work, and you're not gonna pay me. I don't want to keep hearing these excuses. Well, blah, blah, blah. That only goes so far. Right. When I was in the Nation of Islam, I was putting in really, really hard, I mean, labor. And time goes by. You know, I don't expect nothing to happen overnight, but damn, you know, years are passing by. Right. And I'm still, I still have to wash dishes and pick up cans off the street. <laughs> I'm like, this ain't working. It's not working. When I was a younger person, all that that thrill stuff thousands of people coming you know to hear minister Farrakhan and all all that hype when you're a young person ain't never been nowhere in your life I, I was in a small town you know all my life I never really went nowhere so when I joined the nation of Islam I get to travel this is before I drove, started driving trucks I get to travel and I'm in New York I'm in Delaware, I mean Louisiana, we follow Minister Farrakhan all over the country. That's exciting. You know, at first, Minister Farrakhan, you know, 30, 40 people might come out to hear him. It start growing. 
See, he already had a reputation with the Nation of Islam. It was about getting his name back out there. That's right. what it was about. He already had a reputation being the national representative of, of Elijah Muhammad back in the day. It was just a matter of time before people started getting hip, getting back to, you know, Louis Farrakhan. Right. So I helped him do all that, you know, for, for nine years. But um, that's good for him. I didn't, I, I didn't see nothing was, was happening with me. Like the dick and the reality got in the chat room. Uh, you know, I was, I was sleeping on pickle barrels and, and eating burned up bean pies. But the way I look at it though, I was a soldier. And I'm like, this ain't nothing compared to what real soldiers go through. You know, like if you was in Vietnam or Iraq some damn where. Right. So I'm like, this ain't nothing compared to that. I'm a soldier. I can sleep on a pickle barrel, sleep on the floor, fight with the rats in the basement. No big deal. But Minister Farrakhan's situation was changing, and mine wasn't. I got a problem with that. And as you mature, thousands of people and all the hype. And see, even right now, there are brothers and sisters who are crazy about Farrakhan because he's able to bring all these people out. And they, be and they believe because a lot of people come listen to you and a lot of people follow you, that means, I guess that means that you write or whatever. No, it does not. Adolf Hitler had a lot of a whole country following him. We live in a nation of races. And the world follows these races. They very pop America is very popular. Does that make them right? No, it does not. So, and actually there's a brother, uh, Marvin Muhammad, in uh Mississippi, actually. Taking his few dollars, he's actually more progressed than Minister Farrakhan is and don't even have the money. Marvin Muhammad in, in Mississippi. And I went to see and visit Marvin Muhammad when I was about 18 years old. But I really was interested because I was caught up in the hype of Minister Farrakhan. Even though I saw with my own eyes, Marvin Muhammad actually was doing the teachings much better. They, they had their own school. They, they had their own little little setting there. They was growing their own food. Had a little bakery, a little shoe shine shop, a car repair plate, all that stuff. And if you part of his group, any car available, you can get the car and take off. Okay. You part of the group, go to go to the get your bean pie for free because you help make all this possible. Now you talking about the height of when. Like you said, you guys had your all your own stores, all your own mechanic shop. So, is this the prototype of the Mississippi campaign? I mean, are no. you taking this? No, okay. no, no. Uh, the, the Mississippi campaign is, is different. I was just talking about Marvin Muhammad. Okay, yeah, yeah. His 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 uh his version of the Nation of Islam is more progressive than Farrakhan. Okay. When you go down to Red Lake, Mississippi, where Marvin Muhammad is at. They actually, they have a good reputation with the neighbors. They sell their food products and bean pies and eggs to the, to the community. The community helped them build their, their, their new school. They just built a new school there. They really got things going on there. But it's religion. I wouldn't want nothing to, to do with that, you know. And I heard that he's, he's into the, uh, all the wives thing. He has a lot of women, a lot of children, and they're getting all caught up in that religious stuff. And he think that he's, Divinely special, <laughs> caught up in all that crazy stuff. No, no, the Mississippi campaign is founded upon the activity of our ancestors out of slavery, their political activism, their business activism, everything they were doing in the South. But when the federal government decided to take the troops out of the South, then that stopped everything. Then, of course, the, the Ku Klux Klan was formulated. All these different laws was enacted to, to hinder the progress of our people. There was a mass exodus out of the South. 
had our people stayed in the South and was able to continue their progress because they were progressing more than the white people that never was a slave. They eventually would have took uh, high roles in government, the governorships, all these different mayor houses, would have had all these different positions. And plus we had the numbers to do it in the South. And so all I've done is take that strategy that they already was doing and I put a name on it and brought it to the modern times. And I figured we could take our resources and concentrate on one state rather than trying to conquer the whole South. It's much easier to take your resources to conquer one and see what you can do with one. Then spread yourself thin trying to please everybody right. and you can't get the job done because you don't have enough resources to do it the way that it needs to be done. And see, this is the thing about us. We're very selfish because I said Mississippi and one of the first things some people say is why it can't be my state? Why it can't be New York? Why it can't be Georgia? Why it can't be... We're so selfish. You know, we're, we're some selfish people. The strategy is you helped your brothers and sisters in this state, help them take control of this state so we run the show. And then we help them become strong so they can help the rest of us. See, this has never been done before. Like, say, for instance, if you are in California and you get into a little bit of legal trouble, where are you going to run? What can you do? But see, if you could make it to the state of Mississippi that we control, now we're not going to harbor criminals, but if you can make it to the state of Mississippi, we don't have to extradite you back to California. We can make California say, why you want him? I said, this is petty. This is petty. We're not going to send you back, this man or woman back to California on this petty stuff. There's nothing they can now, do about it. What if they what if they trump up charges? What if they trump up charges? Yeah. Well, they can't trump up charges because it's up to the state to extradite them, just like if you was in a country. Right. Whatever the charge that you're facing, you're facing. But if that country holds you and say, no, United States, like like Canada. Canada, Canada, if you are facing the death penalty, Canada will not extradite you back to the United States because they are against the death penalty. Right, that's true. That's so until you get that straightened out, they're not going to do that. You're going to have to put on paperwork and promise the state of uh, country of Canada we're not going to execute them. So you don't have to worry about the death penalty. They're not going to extradite. So it's the same thing I would assume would be in the case of a state. We don't have to extradite you back to, to California till you can prove no, we're not going to send them back on, on that petty stuff. So we can make a deal. Then when you go back to California, whatever you was facing, the charges could be dropped or they could be lessened. But we have nowhere to run. We have nowhere to hide. We have nobody to speak for. We have no power. So whatever happened to you, happened to you. Right. You know, an individual organization is good, but there's nothing like some kind of power. The reason why a lot of things don't happen to a lot of these immigrants that come to the United States is because they are still supported by their country. The nation, right, yeah. So if you treat these Asians or Africans or whoever they come from in a certain way, you still gonna have to deal with their, their nation, their nation of why you treating our people like that. Why don't you just send them back? They're gonna have some problems. It become an international it becomes an international incident. And they also have embassies too, yeah. Yeah, they also have embassies, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. but we don't, what, where do we have? We don't have nowhere to go, we have nowhere to run. <laughs> Nobody gonna do, no African nation gonna stand up for me if you get caught up in jail. Mm. Call Ghana or Nigeria, I'm an African and they put me in jail. What are you telling us for that? <laughs> They're not gonna, know. They're not gonna stand up for do nothing for us. Right, and, and a lot of those African leaders, they're, they're much like this conflict with Russia and, and Ukraine, 
they're either beholden to America capitalism or yeah. beholden to Chinese capitalism or Russian capitalism. Or, you know, and that, uh, oh, shoot, okay. Sound like you need the, what the hell? Ain't on. Jesus Christ. Now, now, Jesus Christ. This guy. So this was the guy I was talking about. Mm -hmm. to the, um, move some people, some Israelites to Africa and have like a, I guess, like farm and some people will glean and pick food off the ground and all that stuff. <laughs> and go into like uh, labor. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, so mm -hmm. don't, think, don't get mad at me ain't now. But um, I talked, that one of the things I said, I said the women and children. And you've been here for a long, I mean, Angel, you know, we've seen the Noble Drew Ali's, we've seen the Marcus Darby's, we've seen Elijah Muhammad's, we've seen the Farrakhan's. We know the first people to defect always be the women and children. Uh -huh. but they miss the luxuries of America. Is this not true? The Yahweh been Yahweh's, and so, you know, he was talking about sending these people way into Africa, on the Isles of Africa, and them not having any type of technology and living by the Bible. And I'm like, man, your own family is going to die being crucified. You. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they ain't going to be the brothers. It's going to be, you know what I'm saying? And then some of the brothers, they wives, even they not going to that. So it's just like, but Mississippi campaign, like I said, you got to stand up the internet. You're still functioning in society with all the uh, immunities, correct? Exactly. Okay, so we just so we're just pushing black people politically, um, pushing like land and economics and all that, but we still have the luxuries of America around us. The grocery stores, so we ain't gotta rent for food. Yeah. Because a lot of people I'd say if if, uh, if half of these people had to go vegan, I mean, you know, if half of these people had to hunt for their own food <laughs> Not gonna make it. They're not gonna make it, right. Uh -uh. You know, they, they eat meat because they have the abundance of meat, dairy, and eggs from the grocery store. If yes. there's no grocery store, then you got to be out there and hunt. Actually, it might be, you know, uh, let me, let me be quiet, because I'm about to get myself in trouble. I don't want to say anything bad about the people who eat all day and, <laughs> you know, well, let, me, let me stop. Stop me. Stop. Let me stop, because I don't want to get off into that. Well, I, I say this. See, see, um, that's actually included in the Mississippi campaign. Once you get some strength, right? So once you get some strength, we a state can support Israelites. Go find a spot. We talk to the government wherever you want to go, because see. You need to go with some power behind you because you can go there and those people can massacre you and you can just disappear off the map. Like, what happened to them? Right. We, we don't know. They came here and they disappeared. You want to be in a position to go there and you expect this natural environment and that's cool. But also at the same time, you will have a power source behind you. Like if things start getting bad, you got somebody that can come and help you out of out of trouble. Okay. Get you out of there. But you go there on your own and you save your pennies or whatever. And you have no real relationship with the with the government, wherever the land, because there's no, to my knowledge, there's nowhere that you can go with that is not already occupied. So where are you gonna go? See, that's the number one problem. Where are you going to go? Where it's not occupied already, somebody already is claiming under under government or territory. So wherever you go, if you can find a spot, you're going to be under the laws, the political rule of those people, which is foreign, and they do things much differently. You might do something that you think is cool, and it's an insult. And it's against illegal to them. Right. And you have a lot of problems. They'll wipe you out. 
especially if it's just a few of you, they wipe you out, put all of you in the graveyard. Because these a lot of these places, these people, they, they have their own religious thinking and customs and things. And uh, you could do something and say something that's very insulting to them that they view means you should be put to death. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. Right. right. I tell people all the time. I got into a discussion about this whole situation with Brittany uh, Weiner mm -hmm. from Russia's situation. And I was telling people, yo, when you leave outside of the U.S., it's different. It's very different. With the exception of, I don't know, Canada, mm -hmm. even Mexico. You know what I'm saying? It's different outside. You might be cool maybe in England or somewhere, but or maybe some parts of Europe, but hey, outside of that, it, it's it's very strict. And like you said, um, they they they're not trying to hear about oh, you know the the we come from the earth and gosh, <laughs> they're not trying to hear that. <laughs> no, no, uh -uh, no, no way. So you know, um, it, it's 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 definitely a culture shock. Yeah, moving to another country, but Mississippi is just another state. Yeah, it's just a state. It's, it's, it's already active. The only thing you want to do, baby, to control the politics, put yourself in a position so that you can benefit yourself. We're not building no nation. See, that's another thing. We're not building no nation. We're not trying to, we're not going into isolation. No, you just want to put yourself in a better position to benefit yourself. All the people, not interested in your personal wants. Well, uh, I don't want to live no next door to no homosexual, and uh, I don't, I don't want uh, people that's married to white women. Well, you married, you you around those people anyway, right now, and chances are you're gonna die that way. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't building no damn nation within the next 10, 20 years. A lot of us that's living right now, we ain't gonna be here. We're gonna be dead as hell next 10, 20, 30 years, and you ain't gonna have no nation. <laughs> So basically, in, in Mississippi, we ain't got to worry about building uh, sewage pipelines and all that stuff. You know, I do not. It's already, everything's already yeah, intact. It's already there. All you got to do is maintain and keep up and make better. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing you got to do. Unless you're too dumb to do it. You're too incompetent to do it. But I thought y'all gods. I thought you gods and kings and queens. Surely, you could take control of a, a little bit, bit of little state. And if you really was that smart, you should have done it a long time ago. Why ain't just snub, why ain't just snubbing themselves have to show up and talk about it? You could have done this a long time ago. The, the answers was already on the way to do that anyway. But now, Angel, like we said on your show, mm -hmm. you know, y'all subscribe to Angel's Book Club Seven. Subscribe. Um, we talked about how black people who are in these religions have this idea of this utopia. <laughs> Oh, shout out to MD, man, because I know he came on that show. And that was yeah, no shout party. out to MD. He came, he came in that thing, on the show with that thing, big rig looking like <laughs> Star Trek. Oh, it looked like them Star Trek. Shout out to MD. Yeah. I said, really, we're not talking about you, MD, because apparently you're working hard out there. You're working there. We're talking about the people who are looking for, when I say Utopia and Angel, yeah, there's people who actually don't want to work. They want all the luxuries and, and the liberties, but they don't want to work. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what we were talking about, brother. And because um, I know I had to go that night, so I had to work the next day. But you know, um, it, it was. Oh, did you get the? Uh, it, it, uh, brother, brother Blackstone, yeah. it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. First of all, like I was, like I was uh, gonna say in the beginning of the broadcast, apparently you don't know who you're talking to. The this this Negro now, all this black power rhetoric and black conscious rhetoric that was better in 1960. The people had a different mindset. The people in 2022, they riding around here. Some of them are riding around in Rolls Royce cars. That's true. They got multi-million dollar contracts. Yes, sir. They making big time money. They on the, they on Facebook taking big wads of money and throwing it around and, and, and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. 
you dealing with people that has a, a whole different, they're not interested. You don't even hear them talk about black this and black that. They don't talk, they don't care. They have no interest in it. The only time they get stirred up a little bit, maybe because of a Trayvon Martin shooting or something like that. You know, Eric Garner, Sanjay yeah. Bland. And that don't even last long. It lasts for a few something weeks. Season. Right, yeah, season. and yeah. Then, then they shut up. Yeah. This is what you're, you're dealing with. So they're not interested. You can holler black power. Matter of fact, even your own black power people ain't interested because they, like you said, they don't want to give up all this luxury. I'm sitting here, and you probably are too. I'm sitting in air conditioning. I am too. Okay. Good point. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting in air conditioning. That's why I said the first people going to leave are the women and children. They, they out. Peace dudes. Man. You know? No, no PlayStation. No, no running toilet. No. Not when you're starting from scratch. Like, for instance, Brother Black Son. The Congo is big enough to give us a state probably big as, as the state of Rhode Island or Delaware or something like that. Okay. They could just break off a chunk. Okay. They said, look, they said, look, black man in America, we have this land here, but it's nothing on it. Nothing but jungle and and and, and, and these rivers and blah 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 you get nothing but you can have it for free come here now see i wouldn't want to go take that deal unless i had something with the with the with the government of the congo where i can say this is mine we have a deal where when we come into strength you support us we support you some t some type of treaty like that because you are in a position to defend yourself you build this up and the country of Congo said, and then the United States is angry, what you Negroes left us for over there with that bull. So you ain't you don't have no protection from, from the United States. And these people, once you build it up, I think we want our land back. <laughs> what, what what you gonna do? See, so you, you have to you, their version of eminent domain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They don't want to hear that. Well, you know, we all African brothers and sisters. Yes, and this African brother get ready to take your crown. <laughs> okay, so you want to build something from scratch. You want to be around the black people. You're going to have to build everything from scratch. You're going to have to go in there and chop down the trees. You're going to have to put in your own sewer system, plumbing system. Yeah, a whole lot of work, especially when you talk about, especially when you were talking about if you want to try to be modern, modernized. Right, or even catch up to your, your, your former life, catch up to your former life. You're not going to be able to do, and it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen no time soon. You're going to be happy within a few years or whatever you hope to get on the level of the Amish. <laughs> like, you going to hope to get on the level how they used to live in the 1820s or something. Hold up. The Amish got solar panels now. So okay. So, oh, that's, you know, well, you know, all those Amish people, some of them are hip to technology. Some of those Amish people actually drive cars. Absolutely, yeah. But some of the strict ones, they don't play that. Okay. I don't know I don't know how much truck driving you've done, but they're like if you go into Pennsylvania and some of these places, I've been, I got lost one time and went through Amish country. They are very, very strict. Yeah. And you better not hit their horse on the road. The the state of Pennsylvania, wherever you hit these people, you gonna have you're gonna be in really, really bad shape. They don't play that. So I'm in Amish country. <laughs> I'm in Amish country. And, and they got the right of way. They got the right of way. And you behind this slow horse like God damn <laughs> for hours. All these farms, you don't know which one this horse belonged to. Like, God damn. <laughs> I mean, th this horse got the whole line backed up. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> but, you know, I've never had any problem with the Amish people. They are, uh, they are very helpful, assisting. But, uh, and they always ask you, how long you going to stay? <laughs> how long you going to stay?
<laughs> they're very helpful and, and assist you, but it, but people always say, how long are you going to stay where you're going? I don't think they want your company like that. <laughs> but look at here. you talking to the Negro of 2022. They don't want to hear that black power stuff. Even your own people. Look, Brother Maurice made a version of the Mississippi campaign. I don't know if you know about that or not. He made a version of the Mississippi yeah, I, campaign. I remember, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As long as he was talking, oh, man, we're going to go to Mississippi. We're going to do this. All his people rallying. And they doing their research. They giving the information. We This is how we're going to do it and blah, blah, blah. When Maurice actually began to pack their bags up and said, we, we found housing housing, and we're going to do this. When he actually started doing it, his people started disappearing. What? Yeah. Oh, no. what? His people started disappearing. Now, I don't know what's happening with that, with that now, but... Brother Maurice, last time I talked to him, he said, man, you was right. It's going to be, it's harder than I thought. Of course, you're dealing with, Brother Black Sign, you're dealing with the Negro. <laughs> Haven't you heard? <laughs> Haven't you heard you're dealing with the Negro? Right, right. So, I mean, I guess my, my, my question would be this, Angel, because I know, like you said, you're dealing with people who own, like, and best interest and all that. So that only leaves. I mean, what? What? I mean, my, my thing is, what is the purpose of us moving all to Mississippi? Like, what is the end game? Like, what? Uh, what are we trying to? I mean, is it is it to fulfill the need of a black space? Is that what it's for? Is it, you know? The original first state of Mississippi is very important because what you want to do is establish a, a power base for yourself, a safe haven for yourself, a sanctuary for yourself. Just like they have sanctuary cities for these immigrants. And, and to show you how bold these, these are cities, Donald Trump put down the initiative of, of how he wants to treat immigrants. And these cities told the federal government, we ain't going to obey you. We're going to bring them in. We're going to take care of the hell with the federal government. I remember that. I remember Look, these are cities. Yeah. Yeah. So if we created a sanctuary state, what the hell is the government going to say to a state? And they don't have the power and won't make a move and, t and tell a city what they can and cannot do. Yeah. See what I'm saying? That's why I told you, if you got in trouble in California, and you made it to Mississippi, we got your back. Okay, so let me ask this, Angel, because you know, you mentioned how some black people are selfish. Yeah. Everybody coming to the state, is there checks and balances? Because you know, black people individually have agendas. Yes. Like, is there a check and balance to prevent? anything from too, going too far left or too far right as far as like, I don't know, just... Uh, Actually, I think the concept of how the United States government is set up, the checks and balance system, yeah. I think that's a great one to follow, actually. Okay. Because nobody really have no power. You know, the president have limitations, the Congress yeah. have limitations, the, okay. e even the Supreme Court have, they have their limitations. Also, it would be good for other people to know, like especially when it comes to money, uh, we got other people counting and coming right behind you too. So it's going to be hard to steal. Hard for funds to be disappearing because the main people that's supposed to be in charge of it are going to do their thing, but they're going to always know we got somebody else behind, you know, that's coming right behind us. And even if they don't, you're going to get nervous because you said, I don't know if I should take the chance to, to mess around and do this because I got folks watching me, you know, coming behind me. Right, right. So it's nothing, nothing is perfect. We, we know that. You can't expect right. everything to be perfect. 
but you want to try to put in place, think of everything that, that could go wrong and try to put, like you said, the checks and the balances and try to get that right. Now, for me, I'm depending on Mississippi being an agriculture state. Okay. That's the base that's going to provide the jobs that we need. Okay, now what, I'm, I'm, refresh me, what grows out of Mississippi? I'm, I'm... You can grow whatever the, whatever you want to out of there, but I think I think it's mainly, okay. I think that, of course, they're known for cotton. Okay, cotton, right. I think that, that Mississippi and a lot of those southern states are, are known for, you know, cotton production. That's one of the main products that I, that I know of. You know, even when I'm driving through the state, that's a lot of the fields I see. Now, like if yeah. you come to Illinois or some of the Midwestern states, it's always soybeans and, 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 and wheat and okay. corn. But when you go through Mississippi, you, you always see a whole bunch of cotton fields and stuff. There's a lot of cotton that they grow there. They grow other things too, watermelon and tomatoes well, and okay, peaches yeah. and there's, there's a whole lot of other, other things too. Oh yeah, see, right. Uh, they uh, especially Georgia. They're known for textiles, carp, you know, making carpets and things of this nature too. Mm. Yeah. So, but just like the MD twenty said on the last program, we're gonna give. That's a good idea. What he said, give the agriculture um, aspect of the campaign division, give it to the farmers. They know what they're doing. That's their business. They experts well, in that. Yeah, yeah. MD, I, I think MD might be working. MD, if yeah. you have a chance, uh, get the link. I mean, I know you have work and everything, but you know, if you, you know, maybe take a break or whatever, and I know you're out there on that road. Shout out to you, man. Be safe. Um, man, I'd like you to jump in because, I mean, I know I know MD agrees with uh, the Mississippi campaign. Right? Yeah. And I know his country, and it, and it sounds like, I said, damn, okay, I like, I like what he's saying. Yeah. Uh, I like what I hear about the Mississippi campaign as opposed to all these other ideas. I'm going to be 100 with you, Angel. Because I've heard, I've heard, all, I've heard it all. You know, a Mississippi campaign sounds the most practical because, like I said, you're not losing nothing. You just move into another state, basically. No, you don't. You know, um, but again, um, you know, it's not a stab in the dark, because like a lot of these things sound like a stab in the dark. And I know Anon, I know you listen to Anon, um, you know, <laughs> when you talked about his theocracy, because you did say theocracy, because I want to misquote. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought maybe MD just pulled up. MD, man, what's oh. up, man? What's oh, up? there my brother is. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Hey, give me a sec. Okay, no problem, MD, no problem, man. Shoot, man. Um, All right, we got the three musketeers. That's right, that's right. <laughs> three musketeers here. Back yes. back together again. Yes, sir. See, we have to look at it this way. When I talk to the black power people, black council, or whatever, yeah. it's not, I'm on board. I've been on board that type of talk right. since I was a little boy. Right. But you're dealing with a group of people, that's not where their head is at. They're not thinking okay. on that level. Right. Well, because a lot of them are in this utopic state of mind. I'm because talking about I'm talking about the, the masses of the people themselves. They're not they're not with you on that. They're, they're not they don't care about nation building. This is their nation. Right, right, right. My grandma okay, was born okay, here, right, I'm an American, right. blah blah blah. See the Mississippi campaign is mute race because it's what you're doing is helpful to the whole state. It's not necessarily you doing it because you do want to help your people, but it's, it's it has nothing to do with with race. So you're not saying, "Come on, black people!" It's no, because you you need you need the people of, of whoever is in that state. You put something down, show them that it benefits them too, so they will support you in benefiting you, benefiting us. Period. It has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with my religion. Oh, Allah and, you know, Jesus. Those words don't come out of my mouth talking about the Mississippi campaign. It has nothing to do with that. You have to look at the Mississippi campaign in the same kind of manner that we probably would look at affirmative action, the Civil Rights Bill of 1965. Those things were created to benefit black people. It don't say nothing. They was not designed, well, if you're gay, 
uh, you, you can't benefit from the civil rights bill. If you're married to a white woman, that ain't how things go. If they gave us reparations, they're not going to ask you, what's your sexual orientation? And are you married to a white woman? Do you own a dog? Whoever defined as a descendant of slaves, a black American in this country, you deserve reparations. They don't care about your personal life status, what you believe in and what you're doing. Nobody care. Nobody care nothing about, about, about that. Or when you talk about reparations, we're only talking about are you a descendant of slaves? You'd be amazed how many white people come out the out of woodwork if we got reparations. I, I, I got three, three, three point, 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 oh, Negro blood. <laughs> trying to get, you know, trying to get reparations. Which in, in, that scenario actually has happened when you talk about the Native American people, because those people that's on these on these uh, reservation stuff, they're not, of course, you know, the the, the real the real deal. They are a bunch of descendants of people who probably intermix with the Native American, and they pass or outright lie. They was Caucasian, talking about they were. Uh, no, Native American. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because you know, Ooh, you know, I go through, especially driving trucks. I also been through a lot of these Native American right, uh, uh, reservations yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And some of them look legit, and some look just look like outright white people. I'm like, what the yeah. hell is it? You are Native American. Straight Caucasian. Yeah. Straight Caucasian. Yep. I said, what part of Native American are you supposed to be? But that's that's how it go. So you're dealing with a people, and you got to work. See, the black country community want to make our people what they want them to be, which is not going to happen. Yeah. If you want to help our people, you're going to have to work from where, they, where their head is at, where they're at. Otherwise, leave them alone. Do your little organization. You know, get your little people, pack your bags, go to Israel or, or Africa, Congo, wherever the hell you want to. Y'all can do that. But the majority of these people are not interested. You might get them interested in the idea of the Mississippi campaign because you're selling the point it's a power base for all of us. And you tell them the benefits. If we can pull this off, this is how we benefit as a people. And then we're not going to stop with Mississippi. Now we want to go, go for Georgia. Georgia is going to be easier to get than Mississippi because Mississippi been done. And the people are hyped up and motivated. Especially, you take control of that state, and you actually can do what you claim you can do. We but, can actually, Georgia, huh? But Georgia is, is, a, is kind of weird because the inner Atlanta, you got Atlanta and then you got Georgia. Atlanta yeah. is predominantly black. Exactly. But on the outskirts, it's predominantly white. So we also, we'll saw that problem with the success of the Mississippi campaign, because just like you said about that brother, if we can get 30% of our people, get people to go down to the South, we can start pulling some stuff off. But see, my thing is, don't do it little by little. Just concentrate. Let's boom Mississippi. Then boom. You know, all our resources go into one. Boom, one after the other. Boom, boom, boom. You build enough so that you can have some power. And actually... What people don't understand is a state, with that, huh? With that power, I mean, again, with that power comes, I won't even say corruption, that's a cliche, different agendas. With that power, you know, like how do we, you know, I mean, do we, uh, I guess, go to the voting system? Because, I mean, you're talking about, okay, you're talking about funds going towards something that, Will serve a long-term agenda, but yeah. in that in that scenario by itself, there can be a fracture because once black people get some money, black people obviously husbands and wives, you know, get some money and they're like, oh, why'd you buy that? Not that we're gonna buy this, and then now we got. So I can imagine the people are more just not family members, even family members, even the wives, all that. When we get this type of power, unless we come, I guess, with some memorandum or some type of, uh, it's like, how do we, again, that goes back to the checks and balance. Yeah. Because, when you're doing the I mean, money, nothing, uh, nothing is perfect. Okay. Nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect, and nobody, 
I mean, sometimes you, you can't deal with something until you actually get into the into the meat of it. So you can see what you're working with. Okay. But I'm looking and we're hoping, because there's always going to be corruption. There's always going to be something that ain't going to do right. No, I, I get that. Um, you, there's not going to be right. do right. But, I mean, just, I mean, the United States of America, the government, every nation on the planet have to, got to deal with their, cor you know, corrupt people and, and, and wackos, whatever. I mean, that's just how it, it goes. There's nothing, there's too much that you can do with it. But the only thing you can do is deal with the situation when it comes for There ain't too much that you can do about it. I mean, look, I mean, look at my situation from last year. I had somebody that was, I allowed to get real close to me. They come up, they was behind my defenses. And they tried to destroy me. I didn't know, I had no idea that it would have went like that. I had no idea. Some of your worst enemies will come from up out of your own ranks. We, we don't know that. So, I mean, there's nothing that you can do to prevent it. Something like that. But also at the same time, you can you can narrow that that probability when the people that you're working with, they actually want this for real and want it to happen. And there's all kinds of eyes watching. Right. But Angel, I mean a person can want it for real, but again, When you're dealing with money and power, sometimes it's just, and I'm not saying it's wrong or right, mm -hmm. even the corruption part, I'm just saying there's different, people start to get different ideas, and then they start to go in just different directions, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, MD, man, jump on in. Man. Go ahead, brother MD. Hey, I wasn't able to catch the whole thing, I was able to connect with you. I, I will <laughs> say this for that. Okay. As, as Brother Talib said, like, we're not building a separate nation out of, this, out of these United States. Like, we're freemen in these United States. Okay. Every state has a Supreme Court. Every state, every district has a circuit court. Right. Work, work the court a, as you should. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. That, that, you know, like I said, corruption is everywhere. But when you take into consideration the Constitution of this nation and, and how it's supposed to be ran, we're not going to, we're not, you know, separating that from from what's trying to be done with the Mississippi campaign. We still regulating under the laws of okay. the state of Mississippi and under the U.S. of the United States Constitution. Mm -hmm. That's right. As long as you're doing that, hold accountable the people that that's doing what they're not supposed to be doing. Okay. You know okay. What I mean? Okay. That makes that makes perfect sense. So now, now, indeed. Angel was talking earlier about, like, I guess, like, producing jobs, you know, it being an um, agriculture state. I mean, can you get your take on that? I mean, as far as, like, I guess, I mean, how would, how would that, I mean, how, how would we develop and build this economy to where it would attract more and more people to come to Mississippi and, and back to Mississippi? Because, you know, black people, we got to see, we got to see some type of growth. A lot of black people don't want to put the the foundation work in. Uh -huh. They they like to see the tree come up and bear fruits, and then oh yeah, I want to be a part of that. You know, after the people yeah. built that. So my thing is, you know, how do we, I guess, in the grassroots part, build this foundation to so grow trees so people can be more apt to come to Mississippi and grow the economy, grow build around it. Well, I, I'll say this, um, and I think I think Brother Talib would agree with me on this. The Mississippi campaign is not necessarily meant for every single okay. Black American or, or, or sole person in, in in this country to go straight to Mississippi. That, that's not the point. Okay. The the point is to be the beat. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, when when we talk about building the economy and 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 as you know, I'm a reparationist. So when we talk about building the economy uh, in the economy. You have to have a, you have to have capital in front of that economy. So okay. now, MD, I didn't know you're reparations. So you, I, I we're gonna have to okay, we're gonna have to do a whole nother show. 
You might have to let me know. We're going to have to do this again because I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So Yeah, I, I'm a reparation. So with that being said, to build an economy, you have to have capital in front of that to build that economy. Okay. Black people only hold 0.1% of the wealth in this nation. You, you do the number from there. In, in, in my opinion, and like I said, this is where me and Talik may disagree. In my opinion, once you can uh, take political power of a state, my, my thing is the first thing that needs to be done is the wrongs need to be rectified in terms of the black Americans, the freedmen in this country. Once you do that, the sky's the limit because then we'll have the capital to build said economy. You know what I'm saying? So if it were me, what I would do, like I said, once everything has been rectified, you start going back to looking at land. Now, okay. so the farmers that's already in Mississippi, those would be the guys that would be basically supervising on how everything needs to be done, what areas, what crops, what region of the state, so, so on and so forth. Now, it's going to be up to you to say, hey, look, do I want to get into this business, yes or no? There's going to be other folks doing other things. Okay. The agriculture, yes, will be the main uh, driver in the economics. Okay. But then again, like, it, it's 2022. Like, you got, you got million-dollar bailers. You got all sorts of equipment that do the, basically do the work for you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So in, in terms of how... Like we're gonna kill the land, like that's that's the easy part. You know what I'm saying? Right, absolutely, absolutely. Like like you you gotta get the land first, and and like I said again, it's gonna take capital to drive that forth. The capital is something we now we can easily get political power. All we gotta do is band together. Okay. It's the economics what's gonna be the main I drive for. It. I so once we get the economics, and and like I said, in my this is only my opinion. We can debate it. We can do what I have. In my opinion, the only way to get that economic is going to be through reparation. Okay. Um, uh, as a former member of Encobra, I agree with that. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, we're definitely going to have to talk. we can definitely going to have to talk. Um, I mean, in the chapter here, I was part of Encobra when, when we had Mama and Jerry. When she was about. Okay. So, you know, I don't know if you know her, but when she passed away, the leadership kind of changed, and then I just kind of... I just kind of started doing it, but I mean, but I, but but my, my uh, stance on reparation has never changed. Okay, so I didn't know that coming into the show. But now things make more sense. Uh, even with the last show, I said, okay, now it's all making sense. So yeah, that's why I said you have to do a whole another. That that requires a lot of time and be taking that because yeah. just that little portion right there. I, I love it. Love it. Um, yeah. Only thing with Encobra, like I said, you know, I, I know Encobra's been around for a while, right, right. but as of right now, the Encobra stance is not my stance. So okay, okay, just, okay, just to let okay. you know that. Okay, no, 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 respect. Hey, I, I, I get it, brother. And that's, and, I mean, I, I would, I would have to talk to you more about that because, like I said, um, I, I was really supporting Mommy Jerry on that, but it seems like. Oh, man, that's, that's a whole other topic. But, okay, well, actually, you know, it, it can kind of relate to it. Because when you talk about reparations, I guess my next question would be, did it go, it would go individually, right, to the families? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it would be, it would be a lineage-based platform and where, okay. right. where you would have to, you would have to, uh, basically register your lineage within whatever database that that's come, that that they come up with and and the, the reparations will go from there now I don't I don't believe that everybody should have a lump sum like all together at one time I don't like if, if it were me I wouldn't do that I, I think I think it'll be an accumulation over time but uh okay now what if there's a death penalty it would work like the wheel so, somewhat, yeah, yeah. It, it could be a trust. Okay. It could be a trust, just, just like the former freedom trust. It, okay. it could work. It could work the same way. Okay. Okay. So, um, I mean, let me see. they got a former freedom trust. Trust real quick. Please. Well, I mean, so we know. I, I believe they stopped the freedom.
Street looks for us. I think it was 1874. Okay. So, uh, so after emancipation, you know, they set up the Freedmen's Bank, the Dolls Rose, and all. Well, the Dolls Rose was something separate. That was that was Indian Freedmen, but so they set up the uh, Freedmen Trust and Bank, and it was originally set up like for us to accumulate through sharecropping and store our wealth that way. But they ended up stealing the money and, mm-hmm. and, it, and, it, and it collapsed in, eight, I believe, the year was 1874. I could be wrong. So we all know what happened in that. Like, that was just white folks doing white folks, you know what I mean? Right. But, but, but I, I, think, I think it would have been different if we would have set up more of a political platform then, but now we have the opportunity to do that. Like Absolutely. Then. Absolutely. So I, I believe we'll be ironclad as far as setting up the same type of system with a Freedmen's Trust, and it'll be payments over time. You wouldn't necessarily get a lump sum, just one time lump sum, oh, that's your money. You go out and buy Mercedes and, you know, get <laughs> out. Like me personally, reparations, I don't give a damn what you do with your money. Right, 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 right. You know, right. It's your money, you know what that's I mean? Right. That's right. That's like right. you, your, your, your money is suffer through. I don't give a damn if you blow it all. That ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Makes so, sense. What, so when people come up with that argument, I'm like, like, why do you even care? You know what I'm saying? Right, exactly, right. We but, not, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, that makes sense. That makes sense. But, yeah, so like I would set up, like I said, a, a Freedman Trust, and um, you would get payment every year. Also, I believe, as a as Freedman, that should be a protected class, meaning we should be tax-free, just like the, oh, the tribes are. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Just like the tribes are. Tribes mm-hmm. making billions of dollars every year off casino, they're paying a dime in tax. Thanks. So I think we should be a protected class in that manner. Absolutely. That's that's going to give us a head start in accumulating capital to build that wealth that we need as a, as a nation. And let me also say this: with with everything I just say, uh, I just said it may sound good, but this is only for a specific people. This is delineation. This is only for the free. Black Americans right here that were born in this country that descendants of slaves in the nation. Nobody else. Mm-hmm. So if you Caribbean, like, yeah, you come, yeah, come on, do what you got to do. But you're going to invest your own money to build with us. We're not going to do it for you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 that, that's, a, that's a whole other topic in itself. Yeah. You know, as far as Karen Khan and all that. Oh, well, so, some, you know, so, like, this is, this is a lineage-based operation. So in my opinion, the Mississippi campaign is lineage based. Like oh, I'm not saying that anybody else can't join. I'm not saying that, but it's not going to be on the dimes of us. You know what I'm saying? So then, and real quick, because I know you want to do a whole other topic on that. You got Jamaican. Let's say just say second generation. Boom. So I guess you would already have a system in place to kind of see how far this thing goes back in the or what, 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 what are we talking about? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it'll be all lineage based. So, if you could trace your lineage back to American chattel slavery, it's no problem. And most of us can easily do it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It don't, it don't take much. I, and, and that'll be another thing. In the state, it'll be state sponsored genealogy for every black American in the state. Okay. Free of charge. Okay, you said free of charge, so there's already a budget in place to kind of support the system, correct? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can always uh, 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 misappropriate funds from other stupid shit that they got going on in, in Mississippi. Huh. <laughs> and just redirect it, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like, like, money money in this country, man, is, is we all know it's spent on dumb stuff, man. Yeah, absolutely. We, you can always redirect the money. Like, money, what, once you got control of the state fund, money is not going to be an issue as far as what we need to get done any law. It's just you telling where you want the money to go. It's always flow. Trust. Mm-hmm. It's always flow. So, yeah, all you got to do is redirect that money from hell. I don't know. The damn uh, whatever they got going on in, in Mississippi. They don't need that. I'm going to redirect it. Exactly. Put it in the genealogy fund. You know what I mean? Right, I got you. Yeah, right. just redirect it. Just unscrew the pipe, put your pipe on, and let it flow. You know what I mean? That's all you got to do. Okay, okay. Damn, MD. Hey, man, I'm right. I'm, I'm just like, what y'all are talking about? It's so many other topics we can come. Man, it's cool, man. 
Yeah, yeah, I just want people to understand, like, when you dealing, like, the whole Mississippi campaign is based off of lineage. That's it. I don't want to hear nothing about being no aboriginal. I don't want to hear nothing about being no Hebrew. Israelite, you can be all that stuff once we get delineated on the part that we know that's fact. Mm -hmm. And that's black America. Once we get that part done, you be whatever the hell you want. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As long as, long as you get in the work that's being done in the state, hey, uh, 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 biker mice from Mars, from the planet, I, I don't care where you're from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, do what you got to do and let's delineate and be on topic with the economic standpoint that we're working on right now. Hey, indeed, man. We gotta. Oh man, there's so many side topics we can be discussing. God damn, man. It's a political platform. That yeah. that should be the only point that's being made right now in 2022. A political platform. If you're not talking that, you ain't talking nothing. And and I want to I want to say this too, uh, Black Tom. <coughs> Black Tom, I want to say this too. Pan Africanism. A lot of people think that Pan Africanism is something that's black people. Reparationists are, 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 are to like blast and pan. A lot of them are. I ain't gonna say they ain't. A lot of them are blast and pan Africanism, but I look at it like this. I look at talking about pan Africanism right now is putting the cart before the horse. Okay. Pan Africanism to me should be the last chapter, revelation, the end of the book. You know what I mean? That's my opinion. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna necessarily bash pan Africanism because I could see where it could like truly support all the people in the diaspora, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. But, but we all come from individual nations, whether we wanted to be in that particular nation or not. Right. All the people that's in Brazil that far outnumber us, they they not wor they not worried about the lineage. You know what I mean? Right. Hell they 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 went down to Brazil and Sao Paulo and all that. They start screwing each other. They don't know what they is. <laughs> right, right. That's but but the fact of the matter is, they always came from slaves born in that country. That's right. They don't look at that no more. Uh -huh. So how can we talk about paying that to them? They only take a sliver of their uh, genealogy and only uh, tack it on to African history. We can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Black Americans in this country, yeah, only a sliver. We might accept our African past and, 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 and the things that we try to say that maybe was incorporated into our culture today, but that ain't got nothing to do with us politically. Hell, after itself, they don't know if they're going up or down. Mm. Every time you turn around, mm. there's something going on politically in Africa. That's right. Well, well, just yesterday, the uh, French ambassador was in Ghana. Hell, they damn near crowned the queen in Ghana. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to look at, like, what's mm -hmm. going on politically in these different countries. Mm. If they're not even working on their political uh, aftermath, we can't just like we can't worry about what's going on in these other countries, man. I agree. Well, we ain't got time for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm with you on that, MD. I'm with you on that. Oh man, that I means man, that's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got time for it, man. <laughs> no, we ain't, we ain't got time. Like we can go and spend buku amount of dollars in Ghana and in Congo and wherever we want to go. Mm -hmm. That, that money is, is, is not even going to that population of people. No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we got to look at, uh, it's all about the paper trail. We got to look at these paper trails for these, for these countries, you know what I mean? Right. If the paper trail ain't right, like, we definitely ain't going to be right. So you can move to wherever you want. You buy whatever plot of land you want. You can say, oh, yeah, I'm African. I, I you know, I've expatriated and Huh. Blah, 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 this and that. It's not helping nobody else but yourself. That's right. So just say you're an individual paying that. I ain't got no problem with you doing that. Mm -hmm. But right, don't right. put it on the rest of the people. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Man, you just said, man, you, man, you set a mouthful. So, said, yeah, yeah, we, we got to look at that. Like like you was talking about with uh, with uh, a nine man. Like, <laughs> if you could take a thousand people over there, that, 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 that number is not even readable. On, on the Richter scale, as far as the, the amount of people that, that that's here in this country. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, it's, we, we can't, we have to think with a political mindset. If we don't, we lose every time. Nice. Again, government is the game. Politics is how it's played. I don't care how you look at it. No way around it. You know what I mean? So, that's, that's the mindset we got to be in.
That's that's the way we got. That's the way we we got to roll. I don't see no other way because you know our people aren't going to uh, pick up no guns and, and and try to do anything. That's that's out. That's not going to never happen. That you're not dealing with people. Right. right. They're not in. The, they don't have that mindset. So you know, and you know that your little group, should you want to do that, this government will put you down in a matter of hours. Matter of fact, your own people who you claim you're fighting for, they would be there with the gun with them to blow your house up. Okay, well, I don't mention no guns, but Angel, and yeah. MD, y'all already know this is the arena, so you know it's going to be some people that have something to say about this show, so y'all got to be on <laughs> You, Angel, and Hippie, y'all not going to leave me <laughs> from the arena. <laughs> but I already know, you know there's going to be some pushback on this show. Indeed. I know you're a working man. I know you got your business, but you better be on call, brother. You, see, hey, you got to be on call, brother. I mean, so, I mean, what day is good for you? I mean, I know you got your own schedule, but what day is good for you, brother? And Angel, you got to be on call, too, man, because I've, I've already seen you. I'm already I'm I'm available almost any time myself. Okay, okay, okay. A almost any time. Well, I mean, you expect pushback because you have persons, and see, this is another thing. We've we've done it that way. We've tried doing those things that way when the people had more of a mindset that way. But even back then, during the '60s, when the mindset was there. It was just a slight handful of people because I'm looking at my own family members. How many people in your own family march with Dr. King, participate in the civil rights movement, uh, was part of the Black Panthers or SNCC or, or a core or whoever? My people didn't do nothing. I was a little boy. Look, black son, I was a little boy, about eight years old. And I didn't... I protested against Jim Crow the best I could because it was a, uh, when I was growing up, it was mandatory that you stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance, put your hand on your heart, and I told them I'm not doing that. And they was like, hey, you, you son, you, you're going to have to, I'm not doing that. You know, I've been reading all this Elijah Muhammad stuff, I'm like, I'm hyped up, I'm, I'm not doing that. And they brought me to my mother, called my mother. You know, he's not standing up for the flag or whatever. My mother, not, this is the most militant she ever been. My mother said, my son don't have to do it. If he don't want to do that, he ain't, he ain't doing it. My mama backed me up. And I did not stand up for the flag. I talked about this country and what the hell, the evil they was doing to me and my people. And I was a little boy. Now, mind you, no adults stood with me. Anything that I did a protest... No adults would help me. I always was alone. My classmates didn't help me. No adults helped me. I do that by my... I was the original Michael Evans. <laughs> I'm the real Michael Evans. I was doing it by myself. The militant midget. And the sad thing about it, Black Sound, I was the most scariest child in the world. Jump at my own shadow. But when it came to that, I'll protest and I'll talk. The scariest person in the world. The way I figure it, see, there's nothing wrong with, with telling yourself that you're scared. Who wants to die? Who wants to get hurt? There are people who make mockery of Dr. King and Ralph Abernathy, his wife, and, right. and all those people. Oh, it's, it's easy to get bit by a dog. And, no, it's not. Who the hell... Who the hell wanted to get bit by a dog? Sprayed with fire hoses. That's not easy to do. Especially not like the German Shepherd shit. Yeah, these German Shepherds biting you. Yeah, gee, that's a different type of bite. And look at us as a people. We so pitiful as a people. Children. Because the adults wouldn't take care of business. Children said, let me leave my classroom. And they went out. And filled the jails. And was bit by dogs and fire hoses. Children took action. Right. Where were their parents? Where were the adults at? That's how messed up we are. Because I told you, my, my mother and all my people, 
They benefited from all this activity. They didn't participate. And that's why I say, unless people show real interest in the Mississippi campaign or whatever, I'm not going to go out here, get in my little car, move to Mississippi, and go to the different politicians and try to sell them. I'm not doing nothing to these ingrates. And I'm on the, I'm on the internet listening to this new generation make mockery of Malcolm, make mockery of Dr. King, make mockery of Harry. I heard them make mockery of Harriet Tubman. They make well, mockery of our people. Right. So you think I'm going to do that for these ingrates? Oh, no. <laughs> Not the kid. If it's time for you to die, maybe that's a good thing for you. Go extinct and die. I accept the reality of things. I accept the reality of things. All stories don't have a good e ending. These uh, these black power people tell this beautiful, glorious story. There's a lot of people on this planet have went extinct. And you can get in line just like they did. And maybe that's a good thing for you because actually the so-called Negro shouldn't exist anyway. We are a consequence of the slave plantation. That's how we come into existence. We yeah, don't... But, but, but somebody can use that. I mean, if you just talk about science, yeah, every race of people since Homo, Homo sapien, sapien came about has always been a conglomerate of races. So yeah. the same people that exist in Egypt are no longer here. No longer here. That, yeah, the same people that existed um, let's say, oh, even during Shaka Zulu's time, mm -hmm. those people have been intermingled with different tribes, so technically they're no longer here. Yeah, because that was during Queen Victoria's age. The people in England, that race of people just on that island, no mm -hmm. longer exists because we've had like different uh, French, Belgian, even African. Like when they talk about you know, Britain, when they wear those tall things, those big tall things. You know, they get Queen Victoria, they, they, they did that when they made truce with the Zulus. Mm. You know, the Zulus, you know, that's where they get it from. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, there is no such thing as no pure race of people in any place. I mean, the only place I can argue, and even there have been diluted now, once upon a time, was Japan, because mm -hmm. they were on the island. But the Japanese went, but then Chinese people that went to Japan and out on the island. They're Chinese and Japanese are the same people. So I say that to say this. So when people talk about, you know, pure race and all that stuff, it don't mean even exist even in Africa. Now, they did find one tribe that was interbreeding and a lot of them had like like three fingers and mm -hmm. two toes and yeah, you still got those people around, but no, the genetics have to Yeah. The genetic pool has to keep going. Yeah. You can't, you can't marry your damn Cousin, <laughs> you can't do that. Cause your gene pool won't allow exactly. So, so yeah, it, it's just that's just that's just science in itself. You know, we're gonna. I mean, even if at some point in time there's gonna be a new race of people over in this land and that land, and then people gonna come together. So the people that exist now are not gonna. We're not gonna exist in this form as of now. I, mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. I get it, it. It's a cycle every so often. And so I say that to say this is that, like, yeah, that the people, like in Egypt, during in hotel and all that king tut and all that stuff, they they don't exist anymore. That's why when these Hebrews, the Israelites, talk about, oh, you know, we come from the land of Shem, Japheth, Japheth. <laughs> the people don't exist no more. Not that point. They wouldn't even recognize the people over here. Like, they'd be like, you know, no, you went back in time, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't recognize them, they wouldn't recognize you. Exactly. Genetically. Yeah, so. That's they like true. to choose, I notice they like yeah. to choose extinct dead folks or whatever to be claiming or whatever right. uh, because there are African people who will tell you in your face, I don't know you, I'm not kidding you. They'll tell you in your face. So they choose somebody that will accept them. We're always looking for acceptance some damn where, you know, right. somebody. Always want to be accepted. I don't care about these people. Why you want to be them anyway? What's, what make them so spectacular? What's so spectacular about calling yourself an African or something like that? What's spectacular about that? Right, and somebody that might be watching the show later on, they're going to say, oh, Black Sun, who MD said, you know, the genetic, that 
like it's still, that's still in our lifetime. So what MB was talking about, you know, uh, the, the leaves thing, mm -hmm. that's still in our lifetime. In our lifetime. When I talk about, yeah, when I talk about, like, that Hebrew is like Bible stuff, it's, that's not our lifetime. You know, with Yahweh and Muhammad and all that, that's not our lifetime. And when you go back to the uh, uh, Khufu and, 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 and King, all them Egyptian kings, that's not... But that that's not know, us anyway. Yeah, yeah, right, right. We've never, the American Negro has never lived in a foreign land. Never. Have never lived in a foreign land, never lived independently. We've always lived right here with the good old Masa. Now there are those who will say otherwise, and I asked them about the CC. The CC is, what is your direct connection? What is our contribution to that history? I was on a, on a social thread, and one of the things an African said he said the reason why African Americans aren't African because you don't live here. And he said, end of story, I don't want to talk about it no more. We have no, I've, I've researched and listened to Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben, and all these different historians. I've looked at their work and I'm trying to find out how do we accept our skin color and what we look like or whatever. What is our direct connection to these, to Egypt or to any Africans or these people? There's no direct connection to these people, and we definitely don't have a contribution to their history. The only history we have is right here in America. Africans don't talk about us at all. We are not mentioned in African history, period. They don't talk about, well, you know, there's some long lost cousins and relatives over there in America. They don't talk that stuff there. To my knowledge, that's, we're not in their history books. They don't talk about that. Are you saying Pan-Africanism is another form of utopia? Yeah, it's another form of utopia. Just like Brother MD said, the concept of it is beautiful. The concept of that. What's wrong with all of us in similar circumstance, we come together and work together as one. There's nothing wrong with that. Problem is, the Africans themselves ain't interested, never been interested. They would rather the continent go to hell than unite with one another. Colonel Gaddafi, well, he's, he's an Arab or whatever, he tried to start, create a banking system for, for Africa, an Arab. And some people believe that's the real reason why they wanted him assassinated, get him out the way, because he was working to try to get those African nations together so they would depend on themselves, start their own banking system so they don't have to depend on Europe. That was the real reason why they made that move on, on, on Gaddafi. Right, right. But see, Gaddafi, I don't know what world he lived in, you know, sir, you give up the nuclear weapons, you done. That's the only thing keeping you alive, bro. <laughs> That's the only thing keeping you alive. Soon as he decided to break down those, <laughs> break down his nuclear arsenal, the time, you know, his, his the, the clock started ticking on Gaddafi. Gaddafi, and this is why I, I, I act like a fucking ape shit on, grill on that last show. Mm -hmm. Gaddafi drank the Obama Kool Aid. Yeah. I have a show that I did years ago called The Handshake Assassin. Mm -hmm. Gaddafi was so giddy when he met Obama. He's like, oh, man, you know, he was so happy. He tried to give him a book and this and that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, Obama's not your friend. But Gaddafi drank the Obama Kool Aid. Yeah. Andy, I know you got something to say, but I. Yeah, so, so the whole thing with Gaddafi was you have to understand the continent of Africa is a buffer continent, it's a buffer between the East and the West and the European nations in the north. <laughs> That's why the continent is in such disarray. It's a buffer continent. What Gaddafi was doing was trying to set up an economic uh, economic system in the continent. Once that was gone, just like what we talking about with the Mississippi campaign, mm -hmm. the economics would have brought capital to the continent. Definitely the North Africa. What that would have done was implement a true African infrastructure. The Americans do not want that. Because <laughs> if they, if, who's to say that, okay, we, we set up for life now. We, we go, we can do true tariff trade with other countries. Not, 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 okay, China man, you come over here and take everything. We don't work for you and that's going to be our economy. No. It was going to be true Bar, a true barter system mm -hmm. where we can say, hey, look, Russia, we got such and such goods. 
We need you to run this pipeline directly to, to us. Or, you know what I'm saying? The, uh, America don't want that. Mm -hmm. like, it's all about ground. Look at what's going on in Ukraine right now. Uh, America, don't give, America don't give a damn about Ukraine. No, they don't. They care about the ground. Mm. It's about gaining ground, losing ground. Mm -hmm. That's war. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ukraine is, for America, that's gaining ground further east. For Russia, is no. We losing <laughs> ground. <right. laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the whole war. Like, this whole, I don't even consider it a war. I consider it a proxy war because the media will tell you whatever they want to tell you. Yes. We, me and you both know Russia, if they wanted to, can annihilate that country in a day. You know what I'm saying? They're, at this point, it's a media war. That's what it is. America does not want the continent of Africa to truly unite. Because once they do that, it's going to be a 50-50 chance that they might ride with us or they might ride with the East. You know what I'm saying? They don't want that, and that's why they had to take Gaddafi out. Because he was finna set it up. He was finna set it up. Go ahead, man. Okay, okay. Goddamn, you know your shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I do a little. I, 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 I as a real nigga. You know your shit, man. No, that's why. That's why it takes great. It takes. It takes more than one person. It takes one more than one organization. It's gonna take all of us. All of us together, on the same playing field. We can get this job done. We got everything. We got everything that we need. We we have the brain power. We have the tech. We have the technical skills. The only thing we don't have is the right mindset. That's the only thing that we don't have. Once we get the right mindset, we already on the bottom. It, it, it's nothing. Only one way to go. We already on the bottom. Don't go anywhere, MD. I'm here, man. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the spot. I know you know your shit. Yeah. <laughs> Randy Griner, man. Who said he really negotiate? What's up? I mean, I, I don't really take much into it. Like, see, you know, like, yeah, she may be something to us in America. She's not really no, like, no, like, political chess piece for the record. Oh, shit. So, okay. I, I don't believe so, no. Mm -hmm. so, like I said, it's a me, this is a media war. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, I don't, I don't, she, she, she played back. She a tall black girl played basketball. Okay, right. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, whereas what, where, whereas where we got a, a, a real live war criminal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Like, like if, if, if you if you was if you was in on, in that table, would you think of that as a fair trade? Uh, no. Like real talk. I'm real, real talk. Yeah, talk to me. Talk to me, MD. Like, like that, that's not a fair trade at all. You a basketball player, and and we, I think that guy that we got here, what he was on, uh, I think he was charged with what espionage and yeah. some more stuff. Like, come on, man, that that's not no fair trade. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So at the end of the day, the only reason that Russia even putting her face on the screen is for media. That's gotcha. it. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> they, they, well, they, I, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't let her go for nothing. Like Russia, they don't care. Like all this is a big joke. Right. They toying with the U.S. Damn. At this point, the only reason they're doing it is because the U.S. poked their nose or something that they really didn't have nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. But the U.S. looking at it as being a buffer country. Ukraine is a buffer country. That's what they are. That whole little region right there, like. The U.S. needs that in order to surround Russia. Mm. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. They want to surround Russia. That's the whole goal. The, the, the Georgian crisis. Yeah, we talked. You know, me and Yanga talked about it earlier. The young, he said that the whole purpose was NATO was to go after the Soviets. There's no more Soviet Union. What are y'all doing? Talk yeah, to me, Andy. What, what are they doing? It's a big game. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. Luckily. You got neutral countries like Mongolia and, like I said, Georgia is basically Russia control right now. Yes, sir. Yeah, because Georgia tried that same shit. Yeah, Georgia tried the same shit, and then what they do, they rush them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, running and goddamn bitch slap there. <laughs> like, at any point in time, Russia can annihilate any of these countries. 
that's around them any, at any point in time. The, the X Factor is NATO. NATO don't care about protecting none of these countries. NATO won't control. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So at, at this point, it's not it's not a war. It's not a physical war. Even though, yeah, like they're still doing battles here and there. Okay. It's not a physical war anymore. It's a war to uh, win the minds of the people. And right now, Ukraine is winning that war. Whoa, 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 Oh. And, and the old little white lady with the Ukrainian flag in her yard. Yeah. That's who's winning. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, okay it's a me again. It's a media war. Right. You, the U.S. and, and NATO are, are is winning the media war right now. It ain't even about the Ukrainian people. Like, no. It's about oh damn. Oh, damn it, That's what I'm saying. Like it's, uh, it's again, it's a media war. Yes, you have physical battles going on, but them is minuscule at this point. How you how you gonna fight Russia, a superpower? Right. Ukraine, this little bit old country that that that's basically on, on child support from the U.S. right now, <laughs> a billion dollars every month. Mm -hmm. Do you really mean to tell me that any point in time Russia can just say, "Hey, man, let, hey, uh, it, 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 it's time to go home, man. Let's let Russia." Any point in time they can do that. Right. Why haven't they done it yet? It's because of perception of what they see on the media versus the perception of what the uh, Russian uh, control media is doing to their country. See, that's where we have the advantage. The U.S. has the advantage because they're more broad as far as the coverage of everybody else in the world. Right. Russia don't have that. Right. RT, yeah. they, I, I used to watch RT. RT ain't on YouTube no more. Yeah. Yeah. You see what uh. I'm saying? That's what I mean by media war. That's what this is at this point. It, it's not about the physical fight. It's about who can win the perception of right versus wrong. Who can pick the better narrative. Correct. Damn. God. Damn. You know something? I'm glad you brought that up, MD, because I was wondering why you was talking. Russia is, is, is it's a land war, and they bringing in their troops and on the ground. I know if it was the if, if if it was the United States, one of their first strategies that they use and the United Nations use on Libya, they bring in the Air Force, and the Air Force bomb the hell out of you. You know, to weaken up the weaken up the uh, the military of, of the country right. because because Libya couldn't fight. You know, they, you know they don't have that kind of uh, air they power like that. They don't have the air defense for it, right? Yeah, they don't have that. But but so so. Remember what you just said. Mm -hmm. Use that same strategy against a superpower that's got uh, 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 anti-air missile and, and, and whatever else they, you know, all, all the weapons that you the, uh, that Russia has with Libya. Mm -hmm. You you tell me what they're gonna do. The U.S. ain't gonna do that. <laughs> they're not gonna do it. Putin them already said. Hey, look, they, didn't Putin when they first started Putin? Said I, I know the dumbass region, that eastern region, dumbass and uh, uh, Donetsk and all that. Mm -hmm. All that was off limits. Uh, Putin told me if you bring air forces in that area, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's going down. Mm -hmm. And what about do you think Biden doubled down? No. Nope. Biden said, "Hey, he got he a couple billion. Do what you do." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Biden ain't stupid. He know if if he do anything dumb, like like it, we we talking about fallout. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's he's he, he he's an idiot, but he ain't dumb. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha, gotcha. MD, what do you think about that woman? What's her name? That uh, what's what's that old geezer woman? Uh, Pelosi. Yeah, and she went on over there to to Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. I mean, that, the, the same thing. Like she went in the dead of night, snuck in the Taiwan. They had his meaning or whatever. So you know, trying to flex their muscles. Again, both of those countries know, like you do, 
you you do what it do like we're gonna make it go down you know what i mean yeah. now china ain't no fool either mm -hmm. they don't want to go full of blow full blow nuclear war mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's all again <laughs> these wars we're not talking about invasions we're not talking about like right. just like we no it's it's proxy wars that lead up to it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's all about the perception of what you're doing to the rest of the people in the world is it right or is it wrong when pelosi went over there to taiwan what did what did chinese do they went on this media campaign mm -hmm. they had the ambassador to china uh the the, the, the chinese ambassador to taiwan all on cnn reading up he wasn't in, the, what the crazy part about it is when that guy went on anderson cooper the chinese guy he was reading off a teleport they had already wrote his stuff for him <laughs>
So just think like if we had that mindset, the political power that we would have. First you get the political power, then you get the capital, then you get the economic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like whatever we say goes at that point in the South. Because we would be controlling the money. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. And, and we wouldn't have to look at LeBron James or, or Cardi B or whoever to tell us who to vote for. <laughs> because we would be voting based off our dollar, what's in our pocket. That's right. We're not doing that right now because we ain't got it. So that goes back to me saying we have to have something to come on the board with. Right now, if we come on the board, we're going to be voided out because we don't got it. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's, I don't want people to think that we looking at it as a handout because that's not it We looking at it as A piece to get on the board When you play Monopoly you gotta play with the iron board You play with the cat We ain't got nothing to play with Nothing Yeah. So like, look, all we asking is like Look we need a piece so we can start playing Everybody in this country got a piece of the pie Except for the American black man Everybody did. I don't care how you try to not try to complicate it or, or slice it. No, every nation. The first uh first ethnically uh first ethnic uh, ethnic group in this nation is the German American. Now that we even gotta break it down with the white folk. It's yeah. the German American and, and even though we only like around I believe that number is skewed because you know black folk don't like to do census. Well I think it's way more than that. But even with the stats now, we're the number two ethnic group, still. It's German-American, then it's black. Mm. So, like, we don't understand that the power that we can possess, we can, we can really do it overnight if we wanted to. But politically, we're just not tied together. Once that happens, it's over with. I'm telling you, it's over with. Once we can get on one accord uh, politically, like it, it, it's done for. Like we, we gonna be good to go in terms of anything that we want in this country. But y'all go ahead, man. Angel, you want to close this up? I mean, goddamn. I want to. I want to send a shout out to my my Facebook people. They they sitting back and enjoying. I was just typing on my on my Facebook. So I want to send a shout out to uh. My audience on Instagram and and Facebook, we're we're doing this uh, simul simulcast. <clears throat> okay, let's 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 come up with some closing remarks here. Actually, I mean, how can I follow behind MD? I, how can, <laughs> really, how can you follow behind that? I mean, he broke it down. There's really nothing else really basic to to, to, to say. There's nothing else really to, to, to say about it. But I, I can say this. <clears throat> because you were saying earlier, Black Son, about the backlash. <laughs> yes, yes. See, the Mississippi campaign, the way it's designed and the way we should look at it, it's created so it can embrace all of us under one umbrella so that we can move in one manner. We're not going to get anywhere, everybody doing different things. Because I talk to people all the time, and I t tell them about the Mississippi campaign. Well, good luck. We're going to do our thing, and you do your thing. We're not going to get nowhere. That's like your body. This hand said, well, I'm going to go here, over here and do my over here. And this hand said, I'm going to go over there. This, this leg want to go over there. How you gonna walk? Your body can't function that way. Your, your body functions as a unit. We move together, we don't do it at all. And if we don't move together, something is wrong. There's a sickness, there's a handicap. We got a people here that don't know how to move together as one. There's a sickness, there's a handicap, something is wrong. We should be moving together. The Mississippi campaign brings that healing because whether you're a nation of Islam, nation of Islam is known for their military setup. Nation of Islam is, is known for their educational setup. 
You got a whole state to work with. There's a place for everybody. Find your spot. Do your, do your thizzy. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like MD20. When you go to the job, you don't like everybody on the job. Everybody is there for a reason and a purpose. You do your job. So when that car come out the factory, that's what it's all about. So that full, so that Dodge truck that you're going to sell for $70,000, $100,000, that's the purpose of all of us working together. Everybody on the job don't like everybody. There were people who got championships with Michael Jordan that don't even like Michael Jordan. I see interviews. I, don't, I never, that nigga, I don't like Michael Jordan. But I understood Michael Jordan could get me a ring. <laughs> they understood that. And it took a little while. Michael Jordan understood if I don't play team ball, I'm not going to never get a ring. Dr. Claude Anderson said, and I got the video on my, on my channel somewhere. You can subscribe to get all my videos because I'm always getting flagged and terminated or whatever. You can go to my uh, Rumble channel, and I put everything on, on Rumble. I don't have no problems on Rumble. And Dr. Claude Anderson said, racism is a team sport. So that, that tells us we got to play as a team. You don't necessarily like everybody on the team. Matter of fact, some of us are in families. We don't like our mama. Don't like our daddy. But until you can do better for yourself, Damn, I gotta deal with mama until I can get out of this house. You just gonna have to deal with it till you can do better. Once you get settled, and see, this is the thing about it. I don't like black sign, black sign don't like me. But see, this is the thing about working with people. When you work with people, you're forced to work with people, and you get to talk to people and you work with them or whatever. After a certain amount of time, you say, hey. Black sign not as bad as I thought he was. Because you're both working together to accomplish one goal. Matter of fact, even with women, there's some women, man, damn, she ugly. She ugly. Look at her. She ain't got no ass. God damn. You know, next thing you know, you'd have married her. Because you really got to know that woman. You really got to know her outside of her physical body. You got to know her as a person, and you begin to find out, damn, we compatible. Well, she don't have the ass that I like, but I'm going to work with that. And that's how it is when we start working together. We got to work together, people. If we don't work together, we're done. Dr. Claude Anderson goes on to say, you're going to mess around and become a permanent underclass. And the worst thing that can happen is we go extinct. The end interbreeding with other people and mixing and whatever. Matter of fact, it's already in action right now. There are places like in Texas, they want to write black history out of American history. They already want to write us out of, out of history, period. Why should they care about what, what black people do? Look, I'm a, social media is good, social media is bad. I learned a lot of things on social media. People put make posts of information about what black Americans, my people, have done in this country. I had no idea. We don't, we, considering the oppression that we've been under and where we come from, we some bad mamma jamma. Can you imagine what we can accomplish once we get that kind of stress off of us? And maybe that's the reason why a lot of folks don't like us. Because, hell, we still able to accomplish and be successful with all the stress, with all the hell that we catch, we still able to come out singing. Our people in slavery, they singing in the field, dancing under oppression. They still can clap, still can sing. How y'all do that? We whooping y'all ass every day. We giving y'all some hell every day, 24 hours a day. And they still singing and clapping. And when they got Jesus, just made it better. Because they got hope now. It's a better way. And keep rolling. It was a sister on, I'm going to say this, it was a sister on Facebook, and she was talking about how, uh, I 
I forgot exactly. It's, it's, it's a song or it's a book about how the caged bird sings. Even though that bird is in a cage, it's locked up. It's still singing, moving like it's free. And that's how we are. But see, we're getting ready to remove this cage. Because I'm telling you, it's our time. Everything is, is ready. This is really the perfect time. Because America can't fight every, every on every front. They messing with the Ukraine. They messing with Taiwan and China. They got other stuff going on. This is the perfect time for us to make our move. They won't bother us like that. They, they can't fight everything. This can is the I perfect time. That? Can I have that, Angel? Go ahead. What MD is saying about the media war. Yeah. Black people are the crux of that. I just so thought real. about that. It just hit me. So real. We the crux, we the core of goddamn how the media really, I mean, if you don't convince black people, mm -hmm. it's a wrap. See? Hey, you, you remember 2020, uh, take yeah. your ass to the poll? Yeah. Hey, we, we are the fourth behind the media in, in this country. Whoa. You better believe it. You better Damn. believe it. You better believe it. I just, damn, that just hit me, man. Mm. White people don't control the media like we do, bro. Well, but they say, say, they I say that. I don't say we control the media. No, no. We, we, we are the conduit that push the media out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's what, okay, you just took words out of my mouth. But if you want to try to say it, if you want to make black people, I don't care. You can have a room full of 30 white people. For some reason, I feel like that, that, that those three black people, you got to convince them or it ain't going down. Yeah, I know that don't make sense, but I'm just saying. It, 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 made, it made total sense because you have to think. We live, we live in an age right now uh, what, of what they call white guilt, right? Uh. <laughs> so, so white people think, even though they may not like us, even though they may not want to live with us, they want our approval. They gotta, so, they gotta convince us. So when we, when they push us out on the media, if, if it's an issue, like especially with this democratic stuff we got going on, yes. if we approve it, that's the green light for everybody else to approve. You mm. know what I mean? So I mean, I mean, look, look at. Well, I can give you an example. Uh, I don't think she come on TV no more, but the Ellen show. Ellen who Ellen pushed out on every single black show? Uh, black uh, folk. Uh, crowd, uh, crowd, uh, a studio on it full of white folk. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, it's, yep. it's us who has to approve if this is right or wrong. Because if we say if that is wrong, the backlash don't come for them, right? And right now, the white people don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Especially right now. Damn it, you you say anything on Twitter, you say anything, you it, it, it's going up under the microscope if you want it or not. So you have to understand, like, right now, we are the conduit that pushes, That's uh, 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 I, I wouldn't even say the moral compass, because, like, morality is subjective. Right, right, that's right. That's you right. know what I'm saying? That's right. But, but the, narrative, the narrative. The narrative, right. The narrative. Whatever, whoever, whoever is in charge, I don't play conspiracy theory, but whoever is in charge of said media, it has to go through us to make sure it's good to go so we can push it out to everybody else. So now I got two questions for you. <laughs> Damn, boy. You ready? Go ahead. Did you know about how America and NATO tried to push pressure on Ethiopia? And Ethiopia and Somalia to choose a side on the Ukraine uh, uh, Russia situation. Did you know about that? Uh, well, I, I had heard some stuff about uh, about Ethiopia. They was talking about them uh, a couple. Uh, I think a couple of weeks ago on the news. Again, you have to remember these these, these are buffer countries. Yeah. Anybody that's a buffer country is is subject to whichever side. If you can get to them first, you have leverage because you can basically try to bully them into doing what you want because it's neutral you know what i mean and i wouldn't necessarily say that ethiopia like ethiopia and somalia has historically been on the european front you know what i mean yeah, yeah so 
I mean, I, if you if you were to ask me, like I th I think they'll they'll buckle at some point in time. Okay. But uh, I mean, I got I got to take the truth, bro. You bring the truth, so. Yeah. Hey, before well, hey before you close out, I I just get my cousin real quick. Please, sir, please, please. Everybody on. Um, people believe that white supremacy is the major fight in this country. I don't believe that. Okay. Not politically. Politically. The number one fight that we have as black Americans is immigration. Go read Roy Beck, a white man, go read Roy Beck's book, Back in the Higher Line. Also, there's a video on YouTube with the guy Roy Beck. He got a video that's called The Gumball Theory. I don't know if you ever heard of that. His name is Roy Beck. It's The Gumball Theory. The Gumball Theory, he, he got like he on stage, he got like gumball machines everywhere. Huh. And all those gumball machines represent nation. And he takes gumballs out of each gumball machine and places it in the American gumball machine. And he's doing that to make a point. We're saying for every gumball that he puts in the American gumball machine out of all these other nations, it's taken away from your capacity in that said gumball machine. But it's not doing nothing for the poverty that's in these other nations. Mm -hmm. So Mexico got millions and millions of people coming in, coming in, coming in, and they taking what they call the undesirable job, like black folks won't work. If black folks need to work, trust me, they'll work. That's right, thanks. And not not, on, not only Mexican, um, of course we all know affirmative action. Affirmative action has done nothing for the black American in this country. Affirmative action has done more for white women, white women, uh, than, than it has done for black Americans in this country. That's no secret. That's no secret. Indeed. Not, not to mention, the Indians can go and go to medical school in their country for little or nothing and finish their schooling here off of affirmative action. Uh. The same with Koreans. Like y'all, like you live in Atlanta, uh, uh, Black Sox. Yeah. Any, at, on any day, you can go to Emory University and don't see nothing but. <laughs> Don't see nothing but Korea. I only say that because my aunt, she, she works at Emory, and every time if I'm, I'm in town, I go pick it up. That's all I see. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, you are right. here. Korea is an Indian. Yep. And and they not they not the student debt. They ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the our number one fight here in this country is, in my opinion, like we can debate it. In my opinion, is immigration. Immigration is destroying the black people right now in this country. All, Read Roy Beck, that's his name. Back okay. in the hiring line. He, he, he break it all the way down. But I'm going to say peace to everybody, man. Yes, sir. Peace to you, brother, ahead, MD. Uh, brother. Hey, MD. Thanks man, for what, dropping. What's your schedule like, man? Because you know, I, I, you know, it's, you know, it's huh? erratic, man. It's like, like the, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on reset right now. I'm on. But whenever I be free, man, usually I stop driving. But, hey. hey. You know how the arena go, man. Hey, me and the angel gonna need some. We gonna need some backup. We already see <laughs> yeah, so, man. So, hey, if, if, I see, if I see y'all on, I'm, I'm getting on. That's what. Okay. Because you know, you know the anons. The I mean, I go down the list. It comes. We, even my boy Yeager. You know, he's he's a he's on a different level. So mm -hmm. That's why. That's why I need to holler. At. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he, gonna, he gonna watch this show. He gonna I need to holler at Yanger. Yeah, I need to holler at him. Peace out to Yanger. Like I told you, I'm almost available almost any time. You didn't say that. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost that. available. Okay. okay, because you know, you know it's coming. Yeah, you know, so. In fact, I'm, I'm going to make this declaration. Black Sun is down with the Mississippi campaign. So now, <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, you really going to be, you really going to be hated now. Hey, hey, as long as I got y'all. Yeah. Hey, I'm going hey, to go to war, man. Yes, sir. I'm gonna go to war. Y'all heard all these ideologies, and 
Mississippi campaign is the most sound. But with that being said, it's a price to pay. They gon' they gonna come for all of us. They, oh, they coming, especially now that we got we got Reality's Temple and the arena. Oh, they <laughs> they gonna be mad. Oh well. They gonna be mad. We can't, we can't, we can't do nothing about people, people's emotions. <laughs> I know, but I just, I just wanna, man, oh man, I love this, I love this. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna shout out to, to the Dickens of Reality in the chat room. Twin Pyramid, Soul Brother 85, All My Crew, Reality's Temple, Mellow Cap, uh, 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 Sister Ann, uh, 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 Razzy Fry. Angela Hines, uh, Tafari Smith, uh, who am I missing? Who, 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 who am I missing? Uh, 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 Almond Delight. I, I know I can't. I gotta. I, I can't forget Almond Delight. Uh, who am I missing? Somebody? Twins, help me! I want to send a shout take out to time, all our crew. Take the time. Take the time. I want to shout out to all yeah, our crew. Deacon, help them out. Help them out, man. Put them in yeah. the chat. I think I got. Every, I got. I think I got the main. I only have ten subscribers. <laughs> I don't have 10 subscribers. I only get 10 views. Oh, Bell, Bell. Did you shout out Bell? <laughs> Who? Bell, Bell. Um, oh, Brother Talil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Brother okay. Talil. Yeah, I, I, yeah, Razzy. I said Razzy. Razzy, okay. Razzy okay. Fry. Okay. Mellow Cap, Sister Ann, uh, Tafari Smith, Angela. Oh, Brother Denzel. Forgot Brother Denzel. Brother Denzel. Uh, Brother Khalil. And we got some other brothers. And sisters, that I hope to get to get bored on some new faces to get on the soul train. I'm on social media. I'm always bothering people. I make friends. I also make enemies. <laughs> people. Oh, Phil Fox. Yes, Phil Fox. Phil Fox. Yeah, because it was a brother. I have brothers that that want to come and they want to humiliate and embarrass me. I said, well, you can do that on my channel. I mean, I'm open. Oh, Sister Tangie. How can I forget Sister Tangie? Sister Tangie and her daughter India. Her daughter Leah and her son Josiah. How can I miss Sister Tangy? But uh, yeah, I think I think I covered everybody. I only have ten subscribers. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, man, shout out to everybody. Yeah. Mississippi campaign, like I said. Yeah. Uh, Angel, um, it's the most sound. I, I definitely, man, I, I, I love it. I love it. Like I said, you ain't got to give up no great sacrifices. It's practical. Yeah. Man, we, I mean, um, I, I put it up against all these other, you know, oh, let's go to Egypt or Israel. Let's go to, man, come on. It's not, it's not realistic. I mean, you could do that as an organization or, or an individual. Our people, these these black people, the 40 million, they don't have that kind of mindset. Matter of fact, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to try hard as hell to try to convince them to do something political, which we, you know, we vote and, and, and whatever. But to get them to understand, you're using your voting power to get some power. And this is the benefits of what you get. And yes, it has nothing to do with uh, your personal beliefs and ideology. This is just something so we as a people can do better as a whole. That's what it's, it's about. Now, it can lead to those things. Like I told you, it can lead to a separate nation somewhere. But see, you got backup. You got, you got, you got backup. You're just not flying like those people. That those thousand people that go to Israel, or whatever. You, you, you're going on your own. What if you had the state of Mississippi to back you up? Send your supplies. You know, send your supplies. You know, be a support system for you. Right. You know, so those things. A state is like a country. Really, because a state, because they do it here in the state where I live in, the governor can go to China, the governor can go to Africa and make deals for his state. That's right. That's a fact. And once we get some power, once we get something going, you talk about Africa, now you're in a position, look, we make good organic milk here. We, that's my vision. My vision is to make, is to make Mississippi the world supplier of organic food. When you think about organic food, the, the first thing popping in your mind is, did it come from Mississippi? Because if it didn't come from Mississippi, it can't be that good. Right. I like that. I like that. I we like want to be able to control something, and we want to control organic food. Organic food is billion-dollar industry, and we want to control it. 
And doing that creates jobs, like I told you. We need truck drivers. We need secretaries. Of course, we need people on the ground. We need a lot of things. Because the, cause the organic food, get, it's got to be picked. It's got to be shipped. It's got to be managed. Somebody got to sell the product to other places. You send your salespeople out. Talking about a lot of jobs. Right, a lot of jobs. Yeah. But we want to be known. If you really want some good organic stuff, meat or produce, if it didn't come from Mississippi, then you ain't doing it good. Make Mississippi great again. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And see, at the same time, just like Brother Twain is saying, this is also the food that you're going to be giving to your people. Better food. You don't have to work. You don't have to worry about. I want it. I want to tell my farmers. I want to show the people. You need to educate the people on organic food, but you have to have the people give give them a different mindset. Prove that your food is really organic. Leave some worms in there. Say I'm a country boy. <laughs> man, you about to man. I'm a country boy. A whole new generation. I'm a country boy. We had worms in our yeah, apples. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. The whole tree ain't, I mean, if you let it get out of hand, the worms will take over. But we roll, my people were sharecroppers. All our food was organic. I, this organic product, that that was ordered, that was every day for me when I was growing up. I used to go out in the farm, pull out a turnip straight out the ground, knock the dirt off, ate the dirt and the turnip. Right, got your uh, B12, yeah. Yeah, no big deal. I used to eat dirt all the time. I used to go out there, pull the, you know it's dust and dirt on apples you and dust and dirt. Is, right? Huh? You know why that is, it would be B12. Yeah. If I was craving the B12 and the dirt. But that's what I did. But all our food was organic. And you have a worm now and then, blah, blah, blah. And see, the thing about organic food, too, we don't waste nothing. Show the people, and we sell, we don't waste nothing. Show the people it don't have to be pretty to get ate. So what if the apple don't have a little, it ain't formed the right way. You can still eat that. It's good. It's nutritious. good for you. Stop tripping on, they got to put plastic. Because you know what they do. They put plastic on the apples to make them shine. You eating plastic and all. No. People need to be educated. You don't want no plastic in your diet. And all these different chemicals. We're going to give you some good food. And them cows. It might take a little longer, it might be a little bit more expensive, but your milk good and we're going to leave some real butter in there so you can taste you some real milk like when I was growing up. Some of these people never had real milk. We had a cow. You grab the udder, squeeze, <clears throat> straight out the cow. Right, and, and I'm glad you mentioned apples because apples, natural apples have like a wood grain in it too. Mm -hmm. so, you know, apples come from a tree, wood. Yeah. So, it's, so it has more, it doesn't have like even a shine, it has like a wood grain. Yeah. From like where the core is, and then you see like a little wood grain on the bottom, so it has like a real woody look to it. Yeah. With apples, yeah, they don't look all shiny. So yeah. yeah they, you made a good point about the big plastic. But this is what we want to do. We want to become the world's biggest producer of organic food, not only can we make money off of it? But that's the same food that we feed our people. And there's a whole lot of other stuff that goes along with this too because we don't want to be dependent. I'll, I have a saying like this. If we can't produce it, I don't need it. I don't need it. Because back there was a time in this country where a lot of towns in this country, they were self-sufficient. If they didn't produce it, they didn't get it. When I was growing up, we got oranges and bananas only around Christmas, the holidays, because we only we only consume what we produce. You can't produce oranges and bananas in, in Mississippi. So for a special treat, um, you know, Christmas or Thanksgiving, you have Brazil nuts and you would have oranges and bananas for a special treat. Because if you don't produce it, you don't need it. We don't need it. Angel, I want you to be prepared. Because, you know, Anon, yeah. the competition is listening. Because he has his plan. He's it's not no competition. Prepared. I know, it ain't no competition. No, it's not no competition. You know, he's going he gonna to have something to say about it. He I mean, it's cool for individuals. That's cool for individuals and an organization. But when you talk about if you want to move 
forty some million and try to get forty million on board, they not they're not interested in that kind of thing. They're just not. That's not my fault. You can get angry at me if you want to. The, the people don't want because I know my own personal family. They don't talk about stuff like this at all. Period. They're not interested. All they think all they want to do is screw, get drunk. It wasn't, it seemed like, you know, most of the time, you know, it only took 3% to defend this country and actually build it, you know, to, to make the actual revolution happen yeah. in America. So, yeah. it doesn't take a whole lot. It's not going to take a whole lot. It's not. It's not. So, yeah, They're just waiting for the right leadership. The right leadership, the right moves, they will support it. They will support you. They're not going to support us, everybody going in different directions, doing different things, like, I don't forget it. I'm not gonna support nobody. I'm just gonna live my Negro life, and that's what they've been doing. But they are ready. They, the people are ready. From my talking with different people out in the streets or whatever, they are ready. Well, nothing's by accident, Angel. All mm -hmm. this, I mean, for, for the time you've been on YouTube, all the way up to now with this Russia-Ukraine conflict, and 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 and, and like MD was saying, you know. We're the crux of the media. If you don't convince black people, it's a rap. Mm -hmm. It's a rap. Like you said, I don't know if it's black, whatever you want to call it, black guilt or whatever it is, you got to convince black people here in America. If we don't, we say, no, it ain't, it's a no-go, they have to rearrange their whole thing around. They have to rearrange, like Indy was saying, Edgelyn DeDuris, all her thing guests were always black people. <laughs> always. Think about that. Yeah, so... Angel man, yeah. we went over two hours. Hey, um, just be on call, brother. Just yeah. be on call. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna have to, you well, know, you know, I'm, I'm always basically available almost any time, but it's according to how I feel yeah. because I, I'm still a, a sickly person. I have my ups and downs. So. No, no, I, I got you. Yeah. I got you. Um, that's no problem. Like yeah. I said, you know, I'm going to be visiting your show. As much, you know, as, you know, when I come home, you know, just exactly after I go to work or um, whenever. Now you can't do the shows too late, for me. So right, if, if it's if it's a reasonable time, I will come. Yes, sir. Um, however, like I said, uh, people are gonna hear this show and they gonna be ready to challenge it. So I, you know. Well, you know, I mean, I'm, I know okay. Yanga Yanga would be here. I mean, anybody yeah. that want to come here. And you you can be civil and you can talk or, or whatever. That's right. yeah. We have no problem with discussing these things. But I'm gonna tell you, when it's all said and done, what you got not gonna stand. It's just not gonna do it, baby. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's not gonna do it. <laughs> you know? I love it. Woo! <laughs> it's Man, just not. We gonna be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are already 5,000. Peace, y'all.